Ahoy, hello, dear listeners. Welcome to another podcast. Today, it will be mainly for those of you who are interested in Czech history or in the world of video games, because I will be talking about Kingdom Come Deliverance, one of the most successful Czech games of all time. It is situated to the land of Bohemia in the 15th century. So I will tell you why is exactly this time a good one for a video game. And I will also add some background information about the game itself. So let's give it a go. The game starts in the year 1403. That's the time of a king called Václav IV or Wenceslav IV. He was a son of the most beloved Czech king, Charles IV. And if you have ever been to the Czech Republic, it probably rings a bell because you can see his statue close to the Charles Bridge, which is of course named after him. Then you can see their... Charles University and in the Czech Republic is also Castle Karlstein or the city Karlsbad, Karlovy Vary. So as you can see, his name is still remembered in the Czech Republic and also remembered in a good way. That's unfortunately something that I cannot say about his son Václav IV. He unfortunately wasn't as gifted as his father. He was more focusing on hunting and drinking than on diplomacy or economical tasks. He started to rule in the year of 1378 when Charles IV passed away. And unfortunately, the time of his reign is associated with several bad things. The first one that I should probably mention occurred in the year of 1393. That's the time when he ordered torturing and later throwing of a body to Vltava from Charles Bridge of Czech priest that's now known as St. John of Nepomuk or Svatý Jan Nepomucký in Czech language. Most likely, he ordered this very strange act that led to the death of Czech priest because of some power games between him and the church and some economical questions. But this event is remembered by Czech people as something that was done because of the fact that the king was very jealous and Jan Nepomucký was the priest to whom confessed Queen Joffier. Wenceslav IV was supposed to be so jealous that he ordered the torture of the priest until he says what secrets his wife has. And the priest didn't give up any of those and instead was tortured to his death and his body was later thrown to the river Moldau. So that's the legend that's commonly known. As you are guessing, it's not exactly the story that would make you like the king Wenceslav IV, but there are even worse events connected to his life, but I will get to them in the end when I will tell you about some possibilities for Kingdom Come Deliverance Part 2. Now coming back to the year of 1403, I have to mention that it's the time when Wenceslav IV was kidnapped and was held as a hostage by his brother Zygmunt, who was supposed to be more successful or more of a person that should be Czech king and Roman emperor. That's why pretty much the land of Bohemia and the aristocracy were divided to two parts. One part was still loyal to the lawful king, Wenceslav IV, while the second part of people was rooting for Zygmunt as they were hoping that he will be a better king than his brother. 
And unfortunately, that's not all the bad and strange that was happening in the year of 1403, because it's also the time when a plague started to ruin life of many citizens of Bohemia. And as you can imagine, there were also some economical issues that were connected to both of the mentioned events that took place. Also, we are right after the golden age of Charles IV. So now the darkness keeps creeping in to the land of Bohemia. And that's why they probably chose exactly this time for the game itself. And It's a wise decision, especially when we know what also happened after the time of Wenceslav the Force, but I will get to it later. Once that you start to play the game, your character is called Henry or Gindrich in Czech. He is from the family of very well-known blacksmiths, and the blacksmith is currently making a sword for and nobility. Your character starts there just as a simple helper to his father. Uh, you have some first tasks of running around Czech village and getting some items together. You will learn how the game works and then big event happens. There comes an army of mercenaries that are hired by Zygmunt and they destroy the village and kill most of the villagers, including parents of your character. What also happens is that they steal the sword, the one that your character was supposed to deliver to the nobility as the dying father wished. That's the start of the main line that your character will take because he wants to get the sword, finish the task and also get the revenge for death of his family and friends in a small village called Skalice. The game will take you on quite a journey through Bohemia. You will visit many places like Monastery of Sazava or Castle of Talmberg or cities like Kutna Hora Kutenberg or Rataje nad Sazavo. And here I must say one significant thing that I as a Czech person really appreciate and probably you will as well. And that, that these locations are real. You can still visit them. They existed already in medieval times and they are still there. Of course, they evolved Sometimes for better, sometimes for worse. For example, in the case of Castle Talberg, you can visit what's left of it today. But in the case of Monastery of Sazava, that's still quite an impressive place that I can recommend you to visit. And many people also do it. Not only fans from the Czech Republic, they make a tour around all the locations from the game. Now going back to the game, your character will be running around and later he will also have a horse. So it's also quite cinematic, I would say. I think that the Czech nature and the landscape of Bohemia looks uh, amazing, not only today, but also in the game. I think that they did quite a good job when it comes to recreation of medieval Czech times. And... Here is quite important to mention that they were going after this goal. They didn't want to make just uh, another Skyrim or another type of a fantasy game where you would be able to fight dragons or that you would meet some goblins in the woods. No, they really wanted to make you feel that you are in medieval land of Bohemia. So you will meet only those whom you probably could have met like uh, villagers, mercenaries, priests, beggars, and some nobility. The game itself is really entertaining. I liked it uh, quite a lot and it also has a very good reviews from all around the world. So if you are a gamer or uh, if you know someone, then you can recommend them to play this game. There is also a possibility that there will be 
Kingdom Come Deliverance Part 2. And I believe that it's a super good idea because the period that comes after the end of the game is even more interesting than the year of 1403. Because as you can guess, King Wenceslav IV didn't make so well even after this period that his brother took him as a hostage. And another significant event that's associated to his time is unfortunately the one that he and his brother were responsible for burning at stake one of the most famous Czechs, a priest called Jan Hus. He wanted a reformation of church. He thought that priests were more focusing on gathering wealth than on their people that they should take care of in his mind as the number ones. Zygmunt promised to him that he can travel to a city of Kostnice or Constance and there that he could present his idea and that they will listen to it and discuss how it should be improved or what can be done and he gave him a letter that was supposed to give him a free allowance to travel to this place and also to leave it without any one that would harm him but he didn't keep his promise and instead when he arrived there they burned him at stake as a heretic and that's something that started a very important part of Czech history that you are probably familiar with by the name of Hasid Wars and as the name of the person was Jan Hus H-U-S You are probably guessing right that these events happened based on this unfortunate event that occurred in the year of 1415. So that's a period where we might be heading in the case of Kingdom Come Deliverance 2. And I would be really happy to see what they do with this game and what they do with this very interesting part of Czech history. Now I will give you some background information about the game itself. It started to be widely known in the year of 2014 when they started a Kickstarter campaign and they wanted to know how many people would be interested in a video game, in an RPG that's situated to the medieval land of Bohemia without any of those fantasy creatures. And their goal was to raise 300,000 pounds. And they were super successful because in the end they were able to raise more than 1 million pounds. Then they started to work on the game really enthusiastically. And in the year of 2016, they released a beta version of this game. And the final one was released in the year of 2018. If you will really enjoy the game like I did, you can be also quite happy with the fact that there are also several DLCs that can cut your time while we are all waiting for the Kingdom Come Deliverance 2. And this game is a product of a Czech company called Warhorse Studios. The most famous person connected to Kingdom Come Deliverance game and the game studio is called Daniel Vavra. He is known not only for this game, but also for a previous hit from Czech Republic, which is called Mafia. I believe that in English, um, the full name is Mafia, the city of lost heaven. Dan Vavra is uh, known to be a person that's not afraid of a spotlight, I would say. He is quite active and he is telling his opinions even when it comes to some general topics and it is possible that in the years to come he will be trying to enter the world of Czech politics. So we will see how this goes but hopefully he will be still also able to focus on 
development of some amazing Czech games. So thank you very much for listening and don't forget to stick around for more information about Czech culture and history. I will see you next time. Bye bye.